You came back. You're back. back. Oh, I'm so lucky. All right. So let's move on to the second passage. Remember, we're working our way through the practice test number two. It is from the fall 2022 National Merit Scholarship Program Student Guide. Looks like that. This is um, an actual test that was released. So we know that it is authentic, we know it's verified, we know it's reliable because kids took it. And now College Board is giving it to us to practice. And I appreciate that because as I've said before, we only wanna use College Board materials to practice because they're the ones that write the test. So why would we use anything else? So today we're gonna start on page nine and we're gonna work our way through what looks like, I'm reading the passages adapted from Moses Nam, the end of power from boardrooms to battlefields and churches to states, why being in charge isn't what it used to be. Copyright 2013 by Moses Nam. All right, so I'm gonna say this is social science. Would you agree? It's about like the world, a worldly vision. Um, so on the reading test, there's five sections. You have your fiction section, which we already did. Um, Today, we're going to do this social science. There's always two hard sciences. So what I mean by hard sciences, I mean like, you know, when you go to class and you walk into your chemistry class and it just smells a little bit differently, you know, you're in a science room. Like somebody could blindfold you and walk you into a chemistry room and you would know that you were in a chemistry room. This just smells a little bit different. A bio room, same like you're doing different things in a science class than you are a social science class. If you've taken social science classes, you've taken like psychology, sociology, something that talks about how humans interact with one another in the real world, rather than really looking at the cells that make the humans. So there is a big difference. So once again, you'll have your, um, fiction section, your, this is social science. Sometimes it's a historical document. We'll get through one of those too. I said that sometimes those are toughies because it's from, you know, 17 or 1800s. Um, but anyway, we have a, science, a social science in front of us today. We have then our two sciences to look forward to. Mm -hmm. And then um, there's always passage one and passage two, which I'm really so excited to get to. I love passage one and passage two. All right. So for the purposes today, let's get through our social science. Good news is, remember, we're working our way through a PSAT, which means there's only nine questions. And for social science, you'll know that it's social science too. It doesn't smell like science, number one. And number two, it has a graph. And anytime there's a graph, so there's a science with science without graph and there's a science with graph too. So there'll be two readings with graphs. So this social science has a graph. They always do. The last few questions, the last, usually on the real test, it'll be three questions. These last two questions are about the graph. And that should be the easiest questions on this whole thing. I'm going to show you how to answer those. So you always get those right. They should be the easiest, easiest, easiest questions. And they won't waste um, your time because I'll show you how to get through them so fast. So remember, we're reading. So um, for fiction, we were reading for uh, internal conflict. For social science, we're reading for a different thing. For social science, oftentimes it's that the writer, so the the author. This is a this is nonfiction. So it is the writer who's talking to us. Sometimes with fiction, we have to determine like it's not usually not the writer in fiction who's talking to us. It's a narrator. It's a made up character narrating, you know, whatever we need to know. This one, it really is um, Moses um, Nam that's talking to us. Um, I want you just really to pay attention to um, when like he social science oftentimes is about like we all believe something, right? Like we all as a collective, as a as a whole, you know, person being community, um, we all believe something, uh, but there's always uh, somebody who knows something a little bit more than us. So oftentimes it's the writer who understands something about society just a little bit more than us. And that's really what we're looking for when we're reading it. 
Um, hopefully that'll make sense to you as you're reading it. Uh, you absolutely never want to skip this part again. Uh, I didn't let you skip it on the fiction section. I'm not letting you skip it on this social science section. So the passage is adapted from Moses Nam, the end of power from boardrooms to battlefields and churches to states, why being in charge isn't what it used to be. So they're you know, giving us our only background information, being in charge isn't what it used to be. That's our only background information. So obviously we're gonna be reading it for the purpose of um, what does this author think that being in charge really is, right? So should we start reading? Let's start reading. Remember, I'm going to mark the text. I'd love for you to mark the text.
not a race, right? Yeah, I went slow. I go slow. All right. Um, lots of reasons about, uh, lots of information about democratic um, countries, um, how they became that, greater access to media, digital, cu uh, digital culture, um, a, a, a little retraction. There are some that experienced reversals. However, they, they ended with that. There's a greater confidence in democratic civilian government than in a military type government. And then um, how autocracies, autocratic um, regions have fallen. Um, and, and I really thought that this was interesting. So uh, uh, on line 63, how elections are central democracy but they're not the only indicator of political openness, freedom of the press, civil liberties, checks and balances, and those type of things are, are better indicators of a democratic um, situation. That was interesting. So um, all in all, I think at the very end, they just came back to reiterate the fact that because people are seeing um, and because people have now more access to media in today's digital culture, that um, that's having a very liberalizing effect on um, democratic areas. And therefore people are interested in exploring how to become more democratic. You got it, same, same. We're not even gonna look at this because we don't know why we're looking at it. So we certainly don't spend time looking at something that we don't. Um, understand why we're looking at it. All right, so let's start with number 10. Number 10, over the course of the passage, the main focus shifts from a discussion in the increase of, demo of democracies and political openness to an analysis of the causes of the increase. Yeah, I like that one a lot, actually, yes. A claim that electoral democracies have become less politically open mm. I think it's the opposite, to a discussion of the effects of the decreased openness. No. See what they're trying to do here? They're trying to confuse you with a lot of different words, decreased openness, um, less politically open. They're just trying to use words to confuse you. But really what they're saying, you know, um, a closed, electro electoral democracies have become closed. Um, that, that's not an electoral democracy, right? They're not closed to a discussion of the effects of the decreased openness. Uh, C, an explanation of one set of data about a trend toward political openness. I don't remember them talking about any data at the beginning. Do you remember them talking about data at the beginning? They weren't talking about data at the beginning. They were giving us um, kind of uh, ideas on what it used to be like. And so we've now narrowed it down to two. A positive portrayal of democracy to a strong denunciation of autocracy. Um, to denounce something is to say this is horrible. Um, you want to get, you want to like just denounce means to absolutely put it down. I do agree with the positive portrayal of democracy. I like that one so far, but there was never really a strong denunciation of autocracy. In fact, they were just trying to. Um, you know, give data to support the fact that um, democracy is growing. So out of all of these, I would definitely say that this is a discussion in the increase of democracies and political openness to an analysis of the causes of the increase. Because remember what they really were doing, as we discussed, they were looking why has this happened? So there's been poor economic management in authoritarian governments. People have access to the media, the digital culture is all having a very liberal liberalizing effect. And so um, I really like A for that one. All right, uh, you know my favorite, there's nine most nearly means on this test. We're gonna absolutely go in and, um, and get this one correct. See what I mentioned before. So at College Board has just done an amazing job of taking what seems like a very simple, very logical word to put right? And actually under, uh, analyzing it to the effect that we know that it's a homophone, it can be used in multiple different ways. So um, the word as used in line 20, put most nearly means, please just follow me through this and don't just go through and pick your favorite one. In fact, I hate it when you even look at the answer choices um, because you'll fall in love with one and you'll just want to go ahead and pick that answer. 
um, you know, for me, if I was going to put, you know, if I was going to put something, if I was going to choose an answer, I would just go like to place it. And I would like think that it's going to be B, right? To place, but let's go see. To put in uh, line 20. Remember, I thought it was going to be to place because I didn't go read it. All right. So put another way. Interesting. Spoken another way. Um, explained another way. Um, spoken, explained, um, described. So spoken, explained, described. Those are my words. That's how that word is used in context in line 20. So I'm just going to write them here. Because we're still learning the strategy. So um, imposed, does that mean spoken, uh, described or explained? No, to impose is to like force something. Placed, remember that was the one. If I was gonna say, I, I put it down on the desk, I placed it down on the desk. However, this is just the perfect example of how we don't ever just take what we think that this word is and then choose it because place doesn't mean spoken, described or explained. Incited, so to incite something is like kind of get it started. I think we saw a lot of this when, you know, people were <clears throat> um, getting angry and inciting um, you know, different types of like, I always think about it. It's used with, uh, inciting riots. You get something started. So spoken, described or explained is not incited. Are you feeling nervous yet? Let's see. Stated, spoken, described, explained. Stated is the exact synonym for spoken, described or explained. Ah, we get to, ah, ha, ha, we get to do it again. So fun. Okay. Held out most, most nearly means. All right, so let's just think about this example. If I were to jump in here and think what what does held out mean? Like it could mean like I'm holding, I held out, I held out my pencil. I, it could mean that. It could also mean like I refuse to give an answer and you just kind of hold out. You refuse to like be a part of something. You refuse to jump in and be a part of a group. So you see that these very simple words are, are, are used in different contexts. So number 12, let's have a look. Held out on line 31. Back to line 31. We're going to get rid of held out. Like we don't even know that it's there. Okay, Western governments and activists encouraged. So they're encouraging something dissent and offered rewards. Like they're going to, and gave re rewards, they're going to give for a reform. So Western governments and activists encouraged dissent and um, offered rewards for reform or gave rewards for reform. So I'm going to write my words up here because I'm just practicing and I'm looking for the synonym to offered or gave. Resisted is not offered or gave. Awaited is not offered. I'm waiting. Um, no, uh, not offered or gave. Avoided. Offered or gave? Nope. Offer. <laughs> offered. Cool. That You're going to start doing that. It's so exciting when you get the word. Offered or gave. Cool. All right. Number 13. Let's have a look. Which choice best supports the claim? Now, remember, um, we're. this is not a best choice supports the, the answer to the previous question. This is now we are going to um, start getting into having to go back, but we're always going to narrow down first. Which choice best su supports the claim that increased political openness is widespread global trend? Okay, so um, there's a couple things. Remember the question order rule. Um, this one started on line 20 then line 31, and therefore they can't go backwards. We've, we've already gone down to line 31. We can't go back up to 23. We can't go back up to 26 and 27. So now I've already narrowed it down to two. I'm gonna have a peek over here. I can't see any um, numbers over here. I can't see any numbers over here. And I can't see any numbers over here. So we've already narrowed it down to two. 
But before we go back, we absolutely want to think, what are we going back for? That increased political openness is a widespread global trend. So 41 to 42 starting in and exploded. Don't go before, don't go after, don't go before in, don't go after exploded. Just there is a saying that um, their political openness is a widespread, widespread global trend. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I did read. I did have to read just before. So um, between the two, I think a lot of kids are going to choose in today's digital culture. The force of that factor has exploded. Um, but the answer really is uh, D. And it's because political openness is a widespread global trend. They're not asking how. They're asking the fact that Brunei might be the only country where electoral politics has failed to put down any any meaningful roots at all. That's a wide split, widespread global trend. Brunei may be the only country so that every other country, Brunei being the only country where electoral politics has failed to put down any meaningful roots at all. D can, is the only one that answers that question. Number 14, the passage characterizes the state of political openness in autocratic regimes as unexpected in that the state of political openness in autocratic. Okay, so that's the opposite of democratic autocratic regimes as unexpected in that. Yeah, I like that one. It's democratic. While opinion polls indicate that public closures, I don't think they ever said anything about that. Did they ever talk about opinion polls. Um, that indicate that regimes are becoming less democratic. Yes, very similar to what they said up here. While opinion polls indicate that the public believes regimes are being more democratic, and this is an autocratic regime, opinion polls they weren't taken. Despite the recent well-publicized trend toward Dem <laughs> democratization, there have been many local setbacks. Local setbacks. I don't think we looked at local setbacks. We did, like, they did talk about setbacks. There's countries. They're talking about countries, not local. I'll do, I gotta keep that one just because I can't get rid of it. In a reversal of the trend over the last decade, political openness and autocracies is on the decline. Political openness, in a reversal over the trend, political openness is on the decline. Now, that it would be the opposite. Okay, so between A and C, instead of becoming more oppressive, Autocracies are becoming more democratic. That's kind of been the theme for the entire thing, right? So auto, that democracy is 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 continuing to move. So I actually really like A. Um, between A and C, again, what we did before was if we were unable to just like absolutely 100% fall in love with one, um, the next one is a choice that provides the best evidence to the pre answer the previous question. So let's see if we can use this to just really push one of these two. Okay, so this is a strategy that works. I'm not wasting time here. I have to answer this question anyway. The thing that I am gonna do though is use the question order rule. We're not going back to line 18. Over here, we were already over on line 56 to 59. So I'm gonna get rid of that and I can't get rid of these two. So for 15, um, I'm gonna start with 59 to 63. I'm looking, remember, when we're looking for best evidence to answer the previous question, we're looking at the previous question. We're just looking at the previous question. So um, 
the state of political openness and autocratic regimes as unexpected in that. So 59 to 63. I like that answer. In fact, I had actually just like asked myself, <laughs> wait a minute, how does that, how does that work? So, um, and then something for them to do. That doesn't even answer any, any type of thing about openness and autocratic regimes as unexpected. So the answer up here is A, and then the answer here is C. 16, which of the following is cited in the passage as an indicator of political openness? Let's get, let's just, let's get rid of some of these that don't make sense. So having a a, a strong head of state um, is not an indicator of political openness, it's actually the opposite, right? That's what they indicated. Freedom of press was one of the ways that they said was for political openness. Confidence in the military, I'm narrowing it down to two, I don't completely hate that one although it did say something about military, a presence of the digital culture. So an indicator of political openness. So if I want to look back, I'll show you how to look back really quickly. But I do remember it was freedom of press. There was like a list of certain things that needed to happen for freedom of press. Remember we talked about it anyway? Yeah, so that's the answer. All right, so now we're on the graph, 17 and 18. On the graph, we absolutely are not looking back. I just want to show you how simple this is. There's only one answer and it just is so simple. Um, you don't look at the graph until you understand why you're looking at the graph. So we're looking at the graph in 17 to see the number of autocracies in 1975 was less than the number of. So let's just look. I'm just going to look first. The number of autocracies in 1975, the number of, so here, so it's definitely less than, oops, I looked at the wrong one. Sorry about that. Stupid mistake. Promise me you won't make that mistake. And then look at a P. So here's democracies. Here's autocracies. So, huh, it's less than, so we're almost right at 80 here in 1975. That's interesting, we're just about 80. So it's less than, it's only this stuff here is less than, we can answer it, it's less than the number of autocracies in 1976 or 75, 70, whatever. It's the number of autocracies and it's also less than the number of democracies in the mid 2000s. So it's less than, okay, so let's see. Democracies in 1950? No, it was democracies in, um, 2004, right? 2011? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Autocracies in 2000? No, it wasn't. It wasn't lower than itself in 2011. No. Democracies in 1995? No, it wasn't until the 2000s, yeah. See how easy that is? It's so easy now that we know what we're looking at and you probably would faster than me, sorry. According to the graph, the number of democracies was roughly, roughly equal to the number of autocracies in which of the following ranges. Even if you haven't had like a lot of time in ranges, what I'm thinking is we're just going to go look where the two met, right? So according to the graph, the number of democracies was roughly equal to the number of autocracies in which of the following two ranges. Where did they meet? They met right here in 1987, whatever. So... That's not it. That's it. B. So easy, right? That's how all the graphs are. They're all that easy. They're all that simple. Um, so I know you're going to get those right. All right, what do we have up next? Oh, smells like science. 